again to my video. This is Stephen here. Stephen Conway Oil Painting for Beginners. Now, um, today we're going to try something a little more difficult. Um, what I have in front of me here is a canvas. It's only a 10 by 16 and it's just a canvas board and I have a sketch here. Um, now, you might find this very difficult to follow but if you like, just take a section of the painting when it's finished and just paint that section if you like just for practice okay now it's just in the ocean scene uh, we have a rock up here coming down into the ocean and we're going to have a big wave crashing over here and a big wave crashing over here okay and I'm just going to show you how to paint waves crashing over and it's going to be some lovely mist up here on this side now I have a, a little tablet next to me here with a photograph of the painting so I'm going to be going off of that. Um, so I have my palette here next to me and I'm going to be adding an extra colour today and it's Taylo Blue. Now it's like French ultramarine blue but it's more on, it's, it's, it's great for painting water and oceans. It's a very greeny blue. Okay. Um, it's very very similar but you can just use your French ultramarine if you like and perhaps add a tiny bit of let's say burnt umber into that blue and that would make the same color okay but you'll see as i'm going along now i have my normal colors on my palette i have titanium white i have naples yellow i'll pick the palette up here just to show you okay now i have titanium white naples yellow cadmium yellow pale now there's a couple of different cadmium yellows but I have the cadmium yellow pale hue. It's a very very rich yellow. I find lemon yellow is just very very bright. It's too bright for me. Um, I love these nice warm rich colours. We have uh, burnt umber. We have burnt sienna. Um, I won't be using much of that today but it's on my palette from the last painting so I just left it there okay. I have cadmium red. Now you probably might have alizarin crimson in your palette if you bought a set um, it's very very similar you can use it um, there won't be much difference I suppose but I, I just prefer cadmium red and we have black I have lamp black um, I won't be using much of that I really use that for very 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 darks um, if you have Payne's grey that will do just fine as well I have cobalt blue and this is Taylor blue here it's a very, very dark, rich, kind of an ocean blue. It's very, very similar to French ultramarine, but French ultramarine is really more of a rich blue, like a royal blue. Um, I just prefer this as a little bit more earthy. Um, and that's it. I have a little colour here as well. Uh, that is... I'm not forgetting. Magenta. That's magenta. Uh, I'm not going to be using that today. So this is it, my palette. It's a very limited palette. I only be using a few colours, okay? And this is normally what I would use for most of my paintings anyway. It's a handful of colours and it's a wooden palette. And they're very, very handy, the flat palettes. Okay? I have that down next to me and I have my little bowl of turpentine and my tissue. And that's it. And once again, I have my synthetic brushes. Um, I have a couple of bristle brushes as well that I use from time to time. Um, they're very, very handy, just for filling in large areas, okay? Um, you can use bristles if that's all you have. Bristles are just fine as well. I just prefer the synthetic brushes because they come to a lovely point. You see? They come to a lovely point and that's just the way I like it. But you don't have to copy me exactly. Alright. Now I'll try and slow down when I'm painting this painting because I have a habit of painting very, very quickly when I'm going along like this. But I'll try and slow it down for you as much as I can. Now, I'm relatively new to these videos, so I'm learning myself as well as I'm going along. So, any hints and tips, please leave a comment. If you want to criticise me, that's absolutely fine as well. I'll take it on the chin, and I'll learn from it. That's what it's all about. Okay, now, let's get started with this painting. As I said, it's only a small canvas. It's just for practice, really. I love doing these small paintings, just nice... It's not too over the top. Great for practice. Okay, first we have, I'm looking at my poor photograph, and this area up here, 
okay, is very, very dark. It's like a very, very dark greyish blue. So these white waves then crashing will stand out lovely against that dark area. So I'm going to put that dark area in first. It comes all the way across, okay? So what I'm going to do is just dampen my brush with some turps, dry it on the, the tissue. So I have a damp brush. And I'm going to go into, let's say, uh, some... Hmm... I'll go into some tail or blue. Now, this is like French ultramarine, it's very, very rich, so you only need a, li very, a little bit of this colour, just a little tiny bit of this colour. And let's go into some burnt umber, mix that on the palette, and I'm going to put in a tiny, tiny bit of white because it's not very, very dark grey, it's only. it's kind of a warm greyish blue. Now, now play around with these colours, okay? You don't have to be exact with this. I'll just test this out here. See that? Nice and dark. Now, it looks very, very dark on the camera, but it's actually kind of a greeny blue. And I think a little bit more brown into that. There we go, that's a bit better. Now, we can put a tiny bit of white into that if you like. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Because I want these colours very opaque. And what I mean by opaque is very, very sort of thick on the canvas. They're very, very opaque colours. Now, just fill this dark area in here, okay? And as we go across, add in a little bit of cobalt blue. And I haven't mixed this on the canvas now, I'm just taking it, scraping it from my palette, a little bit off the corner of the lump of paint, and bringing it straight onto my canvas, okay? Now, we have a dark rock face coming down here, okay? So, if this is going to be dark, I want behind to be light. So, I'm going into my white and my brown, okay? And I'm making this nice and thick on the brush now, it's not watery or anything like that. And I'm going to just lighten this behind that rock. Alright? Because remember, it's all lights against darks. That's what a painting is. Lights against darks and darks against lights. Now, just blend this in nicely with your brush. Okay? There we go, that's not bad. And let's take a little bit more brown. Tiny, tiny little bit. And of course the beauty of oils is they stay wet so you can blend, you can come back and blend if you're not happy, you can come back and blend it off, you can wipe it off with a cloth if you like and start all over again. It's up to yourself. That's why I love painting with oils. Now you could do this with acrylics as well, but it would take a lot more effort. You'd have to spray, you'd have to spray the canvas with a little mist of spray just to keep it wet. And you'd have to spray your palette as well at the same time to keep the colours from drying out. No, there we go. And that's quite nice, isn't it? I'm just going to take a little tiny bit of blue and I want to make that a little bit bluer because this is just this is just off in the distance. I suppose it's probably a cliff face or something like that. Just off in the distance and it's covered in this mist from the ocean. The ocean spray. So it's all very foggy and very misty, this painting. Alright. That's not bad now at all. Okay, I'm taking some white and I'm going to go in up here and make this really light. I want this really light for that dark rock to stand out. And look, just swirling it around. I'll try and slow down for you. I'm getting a little carried away again, I know. And back into the white. That's a little bit better. Maybe I should just put the video in slow motion. Would that help? Yeah. Probably saying just be quiet and get on with the painting, boy, will you? No. That's not bad. Right. Having done that, let's take our blender brush. Our lovely smooth blender brush, or as you might call it at home, the makeup brush. See? 
makeup, makeup brush. And they're very cheap. Well, you can buy expensive ones if you like, but I wouldn't buy expensive ones. My wife would. Luckily, this is not an expensive one, it's a cheap one. So she doesn't mind too much. Right, let's go up here and just blend this in very softly. Just backwards and forwards. Nice and gently. There we go. And that's a nice mist, isn't it? Off in the distance, going up into that background. Isn't it? Now, um, I'm going to go in, I will just give this a good clean. Remember, when you're using your blender brush, always give it a good clean afterwards. Because we don't want this blender brush getting full of paint and getting dirty, okay? And you want to keep it nice and clean and soft for the next time. I'll put that in front of me. And I think now I'm going to go... We'll go up and we fill in this dark rocky area here, okay? And the further down we come with this, it's going to get lighter and lighter and lighter and we're going to make a lovely mist at the end. Okay? So it's going to fade into this ocean down here. And I must disappear. Alright. So I'm, for this I'm going to use. Now you can just pick whatever brush you like. Okay. I think I'll use a fairly large one for this. Just to fill in this large rocky area. Now I'm swinging around. I'm going to my box. And I'll pick this brush. Okay. This is a new brush that I purchased. It's a Galleria. 12mm half inch flat brush, synthetic. Now this is used for acrylics, but I use it for oils. It's lovely, lovely and soft. This is in my box now for a couple of weeks and I haven't used it yet, so this is my first time using it. So, as I was saying, just look around, pick out different size brushes. Right, let's go into burnt umber, directly into your burnt umber. Now, I wet the brush and dried it, just to make it damp. Now, into burnt umber on the palette, and we fill this all in. And all I'm doing is just wiggling here and there. And it comes up like that, and it comes down, and we go down into the ocean. Now, it looks quite wet, but we're going to be putting more on this later, okay? So don't worry about it being too wet. I'm going to be building up layers. Now let's even dip into a little bit of... Let's see. We can play around with this. Let's dip into a little bit of that cobalt blue. Cobalt blue and burnt umber. And if it looks a bit green, just go into more burnt umber. There we go. And fill this all in. Now I think I'll dip into a little bit of black. I want this really dark up here. There we are. I want this to really stand out against that light background there. The light mist behind it. Now I might even go in here with the knife in the minute. The painting knife. And create some nice sharp edges with that as well. Okay. You don't have to, you can just use your brush like this if you like. Completely fine. As I said, you can do it whichever way you like. Now, I'm going to blend this into a mist, so with the same brush, I'm not even cleaning the brush, just dipping into a little bit of white. And circular motions. I'm going to blend a nice mist into this. And all these colours are mixing on the canvas, and making all lovely different shades. Lots of different shades. Okay. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want to put a little bit of blue into this. Because this painting is very bluey. There's a lot of blue in this painting. Bluey green tones. So I don't want to be going too brown with this. And that will really help the composition. And the composition basically is the entire painting as a whole, how, the, how everything fits together on the painting, how the colours interact with each other. 
and how different elements interact with each other. So, for instance, if you're painting a nice little stream or a lake or something or whatever, and if there was a little tree just in a certain spot which was leaning a certain way which didn't look right and it didn't help the painting, well that would affect the composition of the painting. Now I'm not big into all these into all these terms, these artistic terms as you could call them. Um <coughs> I just love painting. I just love what I do and I love teaching myself. Now, I'm just blending all this together and then take a blender brush and just blend it down. Blend it all together. I'm going to get my palette knife and I'm just going to put some dark sharp corners up around the top of this hair, okay? And as I said, you really don't have to do that. <coughs> no, that's not too bad. It'll do, as they say. It'll do. Now, um, okay, palette knife. Okay, if you don't have the same one, you can just use the one that you have. It doesn't matter, okay? Completely fine. Whatever one you have will do. And just go into that burnt umber little bit of that black or paint grey whatever you have and just pull some of those down okay make some nice sharp edges here because we'll be going in here with some highlights later there we go that's it let's create some nice texture that's all it is You see that? Really is very simple. There we go. And then I'm going to take my blender brush and just pull that down into that mist underneath. I think I helped it just a little. Um, okay, now I want to get my white, or my, excuse me, my large brush again, my large green brush, and I want to give it a little clean. Then I want to go into some white, and perhaps a tiny bit of Naples yellow. And just let's just brighten this up down here, okay? And get a lovely mist across the bottom here. I really want to brighten this up. It almost disappears then into the rock above it. Let's just keep going with this. Nice colour. Blend it up. There we go. And just move your brush in different directions. Create all different shapes. Different types of mist. Coming up the rocks. Just like that. And then let's take our blender brush. And make sure it's really dry. And let's just blend some of this in. Alright. There we go. And these are really not difficult at all. It's just practice. Practice, 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 practice. No. You can see that okay? So we have light against dark and then we're going back down to light again. Alright? Now over here there's a big wave a big wave or should I say foam splashing up here, okay? So I'm gonna get that in there now next. And what I'm gonna use for that, I don't know if you have one or not, a fan brush, because it's shaped like a fan. And it's a bristle brush. Now they're very cheap. If you don't have one of these, you could just use a normal wide flat brush, give it a good clean, 
and basically just flick the white up, okay? Flick it around. But I'm going to use my fan brush for this, just to show you how the fan brush can help in a painting. Now, I'm dipping directly into white. I'm loading this up at white. And basically just tap it in. Just like that. And this is very, very bright. See, and you're flicking it around. Here and there. And it's crashing down onto this rock here. Can you see how easy that is? Can you see how the fan brush can create loads of different shapes just by dabbing it around. There we go, and it goes down into this mist. Down here. You see? I'm just dragging the brush and flicking it out. It'll take you a bit of time to get used to this. Just practice there some night when I've seen down at home, nothing else to do. Get out your box and just start messing around with bits of canvas. There we go. Can you see that? And I'm going to get my little pointy brush, my detail brush, and then I'm going to dip into some white with a little bit of maple's yellow. And as I was saying in the last video, this, high, this is a highlight colour, really, really bright, whitey yellow colour. Okay? Now, I'm not using cadmium yellow because cadmium yellow is a little bit yellow for this. I think Naples yellow is a little more subtle. And I'm just going to put in little flicks of that here and there, okay? Just little dots. You see that? And this is just little bits of the wave coming out. There we go. And just put a little bit of highlight just around this wave crashing down here. There we go. Sunlight is catching that. Just there. Now. Well, that's not too bad. Wave crashing down. Now, I want to get some lights in just around here on these rocks, okay? So I'm going to dip into some Naples, because the sunlight is catching these rocks as well. So, Naples yellow, a little bit of white, and a little bit of burnt umber. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of burnt umber, okay? And just around the edge of those rocks, where the light is catching, there we go. You see it's mixing on the canvas, so it's creating different tones on the rock. And that's what I love about the oils. You can mix them on the canvas. You don't necessarily have to mix everything on your palette. And you see that? It's just catching the light here and there. And then just blend it down with your finger into the rock. There we go. Now, and a little bit up here. And these are only just basically marks. I'm just suggesting that the light is catching them. That's all I'm doing. Now, just put that little bit down there. There we go. Now there we have a wave crashing on a rock. Now, I suppose we move on to this section over here. Try and get this section in. And this section is basically just ocean, really. So I'm going to dip into some white and go into that colour that we already mixed on our palette for the background, okay? This kind of greeny blue colour. And let's just come across here. And notice I'm just keeping all these on the blue side. Bluey, bluey green. Okay, that's what we're looking for. And just get a little bit, a little bit of cobalt blue, a little bit of brown, 
just darken this slightly just along here because we have a wave we have a wave coming along just here okay and the white form of the wave is crashing over so I want that white to stand out again against the dark, the dark background remember what I was saying lights against darks darks against lights so try to remember that when you're doing a painting because it's the shadows and the highlights that really bring out the painting and really brings it to life and that's what you want that's what you want to achieve so let's go into that cobalt blue again a little bit of burnt umber and actually if you look at that mix it's almost the same as the tail or blue that we used earlier isn't it so you see you can create colors just by mixing you can create the colors you need just by mixing colors together there we go you don't necessarily have to have the color in the tube yeah that's a little bit darker now that's a little bit better there and you'll really see this wave then jump out once you put the foam in okay I'm just blending this corner over here, okay, because this is almost disappearing into the distance. Alright. Now, on the photo, we have a little rock just popping up just here, okay. And that will really give the painting some depth. So, I'm going to get that rock in. I'm going to take my small flat brush. And simply just go into some burnt umber and a little bit of black or paint grey whatever you have and we just want a dark pointy rock just here just like that that's all we need just bring it across a little bit okay it's just in front of this rock here that's it that's all we need to do and then we take our blender brush and simply blend that down gently into the water underneath and you see because these eyes are fantastic you can blend them away very very difficult to do this with acrylics you see and it's just disappeared into the ocean just like that not fantastic now I'm going to take that highlight colour again Naples yellow a little bit of white and I'm just going to pop in a highlight just here and there Okay, just like that. Don't be too fussy, just a couple of wiggles here and there. That's all you need to do. And it's amazing how these things just come to life with a couple of highlights. There we go, another one here. You see that? And it's so, so easy. And if you really want to go to town on these rocks, if you really want to show them off, you can just go into some black with a little bit of blue, cobalt blue. And just put in some real dark shadow just at the back here. Just here and there. Just tap your brush in here and there. I hope you can see what I'm doing here now. Let's go into more blue. Let's make it a little bit more bluey. You see? Isn't it amazing how easy that is? And those rocks just come to life. There we go. And then let's just take that blender brush again and blend it down just gently, very, very, very gently, into that ocean underneath. Now, because these are rocks, we're going to have some little bit of spray coming up just onto them, just here, okay? So I'm going to take my fan brush again. There's just a little bit of white just on the corner of the fan brush, okay? I lift my palette up in front of the painting here just to show you. You can see this? My fan brush, just a little bit of white. I'm only just scraping the edge of the paint just gently. I'm not going right into my paint. I'm just dragging it, dragging it off the canvas. Or off the, the palette. Excuse me, the palette. And this form now is going to be across here, so let's just put some splash of form just up here just tap tap very gently up onto the rock and across here 
See? All different directions. And just pull it down into the water underneath. Now, I know you're probably saying you make it look so easy, but it is easy. It really is this easy. There you go. Put it down. And that's the beauty of oil paints. Okay, now I'm going to have a wave coming across here, okay? We have a white wave coming across. And it's falling down just here. It's falling down. So, <coughs> I'm going to put in the white first. I'm going to just dip into my white. Directly into that white. And a little tiny bit of the Naples yellow. Just the tiniest little bit, just on the corner of your brush. And I'm using the fan brush again for this. So you can do so much with the fan brush, it really is quite amazing. And let's go across here, now I'm looking at the photograph carefully. It just goes across here, and then it takes a dive down slightly, and then just here, really bright. Now, same again, into the fan brush, a bit of white, a little bit of Naples yellow. And we'll cut across just here. And it sort of blends in then just down here, disappears into the ocean. Like that. And there's a lot of burly waves just around here. It sort of turns in on itself. Just here. This is just the shadow of this wave crashing around here now. Circle of motions, that's all I'm doing, okay? Circle of motions, and I'm blending it in out to that light up there. Now, this is where the fun begins. I'm going to take my little flat brush, and I'm going to make a really dark colour for under the wave here, where it's falling over, okay? It's turning over here. And it's really, really dark. So, this dark colour, I'm going to take my phthalo blue. That's one of my favourite blues, phthalo blue. And some cobalt blue. And I'm going to take some of that brown. Burnt umber. Now, plenty of this on your palette, okay? Not too wet. Just nice and thick. And let's just try this now as we're going along. If it's too light, we can darken it. And if it's too dark, we can lighten it. It's not bad, not too bad. Now, there's a wave crashing over here and it comes in like that. And it disappears over. Okay? And then it comes up like this and across. Now, if you're having trouble following me, what you could do, actually, is a good idea. Take a sheet of A4 paper, cut a square out of it, okay? A little square, say, 6 inches by 4 inches. And you can put that on top of your screen, when my painting is finished, and you can move it around, like this, and you can take whatever snippet that you like, whatever section of the painting you like. Because if this is too complicated for you, you don't have to paint the entire painting. Just take a little section at a time. So move the paper around with the cutout, and find maybe just this wave in the centre. If you just like to practice on this section and put that on your screen and then all your painting is this little section okay that's a handy little tip so give it a go but you can try and copy me all the way along if you like now this dark color is just under the crest of the wave here okay bring that down i want a little bit more brown in this I want it really dark. Just fill this in here. Now I'm using my brush strokes to show the direction of the water. Okay, now we're going to be putting some lights in here again in a minute. Just take some more of that, uh, perhaps a little bit of black. Just darken it up, just on the top. Without falling over. 
and dip into some brown. Some brown up here, let's fire more over. And it kind of evens out slightly, then it gets a little bit smaller over here. sort of disappears into the sea over here. Okay. Just like that. I'm just sweeping it across with my brush in the direction of the ocean. And there we go. Now that's that section done, just there. And that's too bad. Now I just want to go in just up on top here again again. And we have a lovely wave cresting just over here. It's just about to fall over, okay? So I'm dipping dip directly into my waist with a little round brush. A medium round brush, okay? I'm dipping directly into my white, and it's falling just around like that. I come back up again. It's just about to fall over, just about to crash over. Okay. I'm putting plenty of white on this. You see, just like that, and that's the wave just about to crash over. I'm going to put a little shadow in under here, then in a minute, just to accentuate that. And to show you the shadow of the, the wave crashing all down. Now I'm taking my little brush, my little baby brush, dip into some black and some of that tailor blue, and just go in under this white hair. There we go, that's it. Just really show off the shadow of that wave. There we go. You see that? That's the shadow of the wave crashing over. I'm going to blend that down into that colour underneath and just pull it down, downward strokes with a slight curve. Now, now as I have my small brush here, I'm going to dip into some tailor blue and some cobalt. I'm just going to bring some nice blues down here from that wave. Just add a bit of colour in. And I'm just putting little flicks here and there. That's all I'm doing. There we go. I'm just bringing a bit of colour into it, that's all. Now I want to go along with my black again. and my, Let's take a bit of tailor blue and a bit of black. And just go along under this wave here. There's a lovely shadow coming along just under this wave. It's just crashing over. No, it's really coming to life now, isn't it? Now I'm going to take, uh, let me see, now I'm going to take my palette knife actually, and I'm going to put some white just on the end of the palette knife, and I'm going to bring this wave just along here, just lean down, there we go. That makes the wave really pop out. Really pop out at you. And let me see now. Let me see. I'm going to take my small round brush this time. And just in here, there's a little bit of sunlight showing through this dark here, okay? Because I find this is a little bit too dark at the moment. There's a little bit of sunlight just popping through here and there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to dip into some Naples yellow, I'm going to dip into a little bit of cobalt blue, and plenty of white. And as you'll see, it'll start turning a little green, and that's what I want. Just a little bit of green going through this wave here, where the sunlight is catching it and the sunlight is passing through the wave. Just a little bit. I'm just wiggling my brush along. That's all I'm doing. You see? And just blend it down in. There we go. 
So now you can see there's a little bit of light coming through here and there. I'm going to do the same thing again, just here. And just wiggle it along. That just adds a bit of drama to the wave, a little bit of, brings some life into the wave. Now, I'm just going to fix the top of this wave along here, okay? Because it's looking a little bit flat at the moment for me. So I'm just going to take, let's take um, a fan brush. And let's just dip into a little bit of white on the corner of the brush, just a little bit of white. And let's just dab it along, up and down here and there. Okay? And that'll just soften that edge out just a little. And also, just at the top of that wave, we have some really bright sunlight just catching the top of this foam here. So I'm going to try and get that in. Because this will really be the focal point of the painting, so I want to get that right. And in fact, I might even use my palette knife for this. No, I think I will. I'm going to try the old palette knife. Let's get a bit of white and a little bit of maple yellow, a nice bright colour. And let's just tap it in here and there. Okay? Tap, tap, tap. Simply blend that in with your fan brush. Now, I know down here we have a little bit of shadow, it's getting very dark. Just down here there's a bit of a shadow on this form, so I'm going to put that shadow in. I'm going to take some cobalt blue and a little bit of, let's say a little bit of burnt umber. Now, my fan brush, I'm just going to put some nice shadow colour in there, just flick it up. Here and there. That's a nice shadow colour. And then just go along with your pointy brush, your medium pointy brush, take some burnt umber and a little bit of that cobalt blue. Now I know it's a lot of mixing here, but there's a lot of detail just in this section. Okay. As I said, you don't have to follow what I'm doing exactly. If it's a little bit overwhelming for you, just take a small section of the painting, okay? There we go. Nice shadow just along there. Now, I want to get some white, fill this in here, okay? The ocean here. So I'm taking my medium flat brush, this brush here, and I'm going into some white and into that mix that we have in the centre of our palette. A little bit of blue. And basically just nice grey blue, blend that in across here, okay? Let's fill this in. And just blend it up into that wave just there. Okay. Yeah. A little bit more white. Now this is very dry, this is very, very, very dry brushwork. I'm almost scraping it onto the canvas. I don't want this too wet. It's nice thick paint. There you go. And I'm just blending this into that crest of a wave just there. Blend it up into that wave. And off into the distance here. There we go. And it almost disappears. See that? Well, that's not bad. As I say, it is just beginners, but we're not going to any extreme detail on this. You can, if you like, put in some extra little details, and I might come back to it again later. But for now, I think it's, it's not too bad. I'm going well. I think, actually, I might bring this white down a little bit more here, because I really want to show that wave off. 
And we're going to, you know, I really want to pop out on the canvas. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit more. Falling around and going up again like that. There we go. That's a bit nicer now, isn't it? Yeah. That's a bit better. And you can really see the darks under that wave. You can really see them. They're really dark just under here. 